2016 was truly a member-driven year. As some parts of our business have returned to their roots, other parts have been exploring new and exciting methods of serving our members, while others still have been restructured to continue providing traditional services to our members efficiently in the years ahead. Show Me, much like this restored truck, has some great memories. And with a little bit of TLC, it continues to provide great service to its owners. Several members of our leadership team are now going to share with you some highlights of the past year. We hope you find the content both informative and entertaining. Nothing quite represents 2016, to me, like Tunnel Dam. 2016 was a really busy year, and it's pretty hard to recap. But following the company's reorganization in early 2016, the newly formed Regulatory Services Department continued its commitment towards creating safe, reliable, and low-cost power and communication services. Something that made 2016 really interesting, it was an extremely quick regulatory pace. Uh, that coupled with the loss of one of uh, our staff members in our department made for a pretty tough year, uh, but we, we hit it head on. From the reliability standpoint, one of the fastest moving areas was that of cybersecurity. This will be a continued challenge for our industry as 2016 saw several successful cyber attacks against utilities elsewhere in the world. Employees will probably uh, see some significant changes of that as they already did in 2016. On the environmental front, 2016 was an extremely aggressive year for threatened and endangered species as well as avian issues. We saw more species attempted to be listed by the Fish and Wildlife Service in the last quarter of 2016 than in the entire previous decade combined. This created an environment where we had to partner with other GNTs associated as well as regulatory agencies across the state to embark on a strategy to stay ahead of these things. Show Me's board of directors conducted a strategic planning session. A significant part of that discussion focused on the safety program. Our greatest asset at Show Me is our employees. And creating a safe working environment for them every day is of the utmost importance to my department, as well as to executive management, as well as the board. In 2016, we broadened that commitment by the first time in my memory involving labor on the safety committee. I personally see this as one of the greatest moves we could have made. We're embarking on a multi-year plan to improve safety for everyone here at Show Me. And it's that strategic vision that brought us here. In 2016, Show Me began the interesting task of looking at the life cycle of the tunnel dam or hydro facility. It's an extremely interesting special project. Our current license expires in 2024. Relicensing has to begin about eight years in advance in mid-2018. So prior to that, we owe a look to see what the best life cycle is for this facility. Following the strides we made in 2016, speaking on behalf of regulatory services, we are extremely excited to see where we are a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. The best way to describe this past year at Show Me concerning member service is to use the word restoration. While the concept of member service is not new for Show Me, it started in 1955 with the formation of the Public Relations and Education Department. It was really time uh, to retool the efforts. Just like these classic cars in this garage, Show Me has a great framework uh, concerning member service and the message to the members. But it was really time to, to, to retool, to build from the ground up and, and rebuild the member service uh, message. And so in 2016, a new department was formed, member service and corporate communications. And it was really a request by our members to be more involved with the 
with member service activities and provide member service support uh, to them. It's something that uh, we had kind of missed out on uh, when the member service activities were building up at other co-ops. We're continuing the education that we have provided for decades. Uh, this education started early on, about 1958, and uh, was really about how to improve the quality of life by using electrical appliances, how to wire the home, how to wire the barn, uh, those types of activities, those types of uses of electricity. And then shortly after, the component of electrical safety was introduced and a program to visit the schools uh, within the system and uh, teach electrical safety to students was, was born. What started uh, as a program to help educate people on how to use power and then later uh, became a program about how to uh, use power safely. Uh, we're expanding that now to encompass how to use it safely and also wisely at the same time. Over the past uh, several decades uh, we've literally seen hundreds of thousands of kids in the in the school systems and uh, this last year we saw over 21,000 but one of the things that one of the challenges that we have uh, as far as reaching kids today is we're competing with uh, iPhones and Xboxes and in order to keep the students engaged one of the things we have to do is uh, reach out with more interactive uh, displays, uh, reach out with more multimedia type ways of uh, delivering the message. Because the message is the same, uh, how to use electricity safely, but uh, we have to do it in a new way. Another aspect to uh, the member service activities at Show Me is that of grassroots. And we're uh, helping support our, our member cooperatives by going along with them to uh, legislative events to show the unity between the distribution co-ops and the GNTs uh, that we, we all speak with the same voice, uh, with the concerns that we have uh, that we need represented uh, for us concerning the, the laws and regulations that govern how we do things. And so uh, we have different activities we're involved in, uh, the annual fish fry at the Capitol and the uh, annual fish fry that we have at Bennett Springs. And uh, just arm in arm with our members, again, just to show the unity uh, to our legislators. In the past, we used printed newsletters to get the information to the employee. Today, we use digital signage, or what we call Show Me TV. And on these televisions that we have at strategic points around headquarters and show up facilities and warehouse, uh, we'll have different types of information uh, showing safety messages, uh, videos of safety hazards that we have uh, been that have been identified by the employees, uh, even specific milestones that they have completed, like the placing of a new transformer, that type of thing. And it kind of lets everyone in the company know what each of the departments and each of the employees are, are doing, whether it's in the field or in the office. And it's really had great feedback. Uh, people feel like they're a lot more informed than they used to be. Show Me Power has always been member driven and 2016 was the beginning of a frame up restoration for member service. It would be exciting to see what the next few years bring and what the finished product will really look like. When we look back at 2016, there are several things that stand out. We did a lot of work for Verizon Wireless. We also did a lot of work for the Missouri Education and Research Network, or MORNET. We did a lot of work for a lot of other customers, and OSCA, Office of State Courts Administration, is pretty memorable. In 2016, we had a lot of challenges and obstacles, but we've overcome those, and it was a busy year, but a successful year. For the past 60 years, Show Me Power has owned and maintained microwave towers. Even though we don't do microwave anymore, we still use towers for mobile radios. And because we've tied our towers together with fiber optics, other companies like to use them too. They install radios and antennas on these towers so people in the area can use mobile phones. We backhaul that data over our fiber to their switching offices. In 2016, we completed a large project for Verizon Wireless involving 73 towers from Bolivar to Columbia. We put together 542 miles of fiber for that project and had to build 143 miles of it new. 
Fiber optics gives people the speed they need for voice, data, and video, and the towers help make it portable. Since 2000, ShowMe has provided fiber connectivity to 164 schools and libraries. In 2016, we responded to another Mornet RFP for dark fiber and won a part of it, which included a backbone capable of extending fiber to even more schools and libraries. As more schools take advantage of all the benefits dark fiber has to offer, the savings and convenience will have a huge impact on our communities. In 2016, we turned up almost 500 new circuits and over 100 gigabits per second of new lit services. A good portion of these circuits was for the Office of State Courts. We connected 26 courthouses with fiber this year. Providing fiber for all the courthouses creates a private network for our state's judicial system to use. That helps keep their traffic off the internet, which keeps it more safe and secure. It's very similar to how we've connected our electrical substations together with fiber. From our NOC, we can remotely control generators and turn on building lights to over 130 locations using a combination of SCADA and fiber optics. We use remote control features so we can improve response and restoration times. This year, our staff became more focused on active prevention efforts. We made equipment and hardware changes to improve performance, and we built additional fiber routes to create diverse paths. It's the combination of these sorts of things that help us provide an economical and reliable state-of-the-art communication system. We expanded our NOC with something we're calling our MOC, or Modular Operation Center. It involves two large concrete buildings. Each of these buildings is equipped with their own air conditioning and climate control systems, as well as backup generator power. Each building is equipped with security monitoring and SCADA so that we can always tell what's working and what's not inside the units. And each is equipped with a clean agent fire suppression system for emergencies. These buildings have become ideal off-site data storage locations for the medical industry, banks, and schools because they're monitored around the clock and are very secure. We have 62 other concrete buildings just like this throughout the Show Me system. If something were to happen to our NOC, what would we do? We built a disaster recovery facility 15 miles from our NOC. It's a complete duplicate of what's at our primary facility. So far, our techs have operated from there twice for testing purposes. We can take customer calls, open trouble tickets, provision circuits, and monitor the entire network. Who hasn't heard of cybersecurity these days? In 2016, we implemented numerous advanced cyber protections here at Show Me Power. We installed early detection and mitigation software to catch and black hole those attacks. Each year, it seems like we get a little bit busier than the year before and 2016 was no exception. New customers bring new projects, and we expect much more of the same work and pace moving forward. The North American Power Grid has been called the largest machine ever built by mankind. The National Academy of Engineers has referred to our power system in the United States as one of the greatest achievements of the 20th century. Uh, I've always enjoyed working in the power industry. I've served in, uh, in the cooperative since uh, 1986, and I've always been involved in the transmission planning and operations of the, of the power grid. When considering the reliability of the power system, uh, I like to think of it in terms of three legs that would support a stool uh, that, that provides for an adequate level of reliability. The first leg is the adequacy of the system. In other words, are there sufficient facilities uh, that are constructed in place uh, that can provide the level of reliability that you'd like to maintain on the power system? The second component of that, or the second leg, is the maintenance of the system. You want the system to be well maintained, uh, to be able to handle uh, the hottest summer day, the coldest winter day, and, uh, and to not have issues on the system. And the third leg of that uh, stool would be the operations of the system. And the question is, are we operating the system in a reliable state where we're ready to, to handle the next event that could happen on the power system? Considering the reliability of the power system and the adequacy, maintenance, and operations, I would like to provide you with a quick review of 2016 on the Show Me Power System. In the first area of adequacy, in other words, the construction on the system, um, that is replacing aging equipment, 
Also installing new facilities for uh, continued reliability of the uh, operation of the power grid. Uh, we looked at 13 different construction projects uh, that occurred on the Show Me system in 2016. Concerning the maintenance of the Show Me system, in 2016, Show Me purchased a large mobile transformer uh, that will be located up in Cuba. With this new mobile transformer, we'll be able to respond to outages quicker. We'll be able to put the mobile in service, uh, maintain substations and facilities, and that will be a, a benefit to the maintenance of the system. Also in 2016, we started calculating not only our performance in sustained outages, but also in momentary outages as well. Trying to compare ourselves with other GNTs and seeing if there's areas of improvement or maintenance practices that we could possibly change. In 2016, the board approved the purchase of an asset management software, which will help us track all of our inspection and our maintenance activities. Uh, this software was purchased in conjunction with the other five GNTs that associated to help lower all of our costs uh, by working together. Uh, we worked with Associated to implement a program that is called Real-Time Contingency Analysis. And with the use of that program, our dispatchers will be able to continually monitor the Show Me system and determine if there's any threats to the system. And this is done by a computer model. You don't actually have to experience the outage, but you can model a potential outage and know if you're in a reliable state. So it was a great year in 2016 and we look forward to tackling the issues ahead and continuing to provide reliable and low-cost power to our member owners. I am sure the 12 founding members of Show Me Power Electric Cooperative that contributed $100 in development checks 75 years ago would be surprised to find out that the $100 development checks that they contributed has turned out to be a $375 million electric co-op. The net margins were stronger than anticipated during 2016. Part of the reason for the ending net margins being more than anticipated was the Fort Leonard Wooded contract was still operating under the old version versus the new version. Another important factor contributing to the net margins of Show Me Power was the earnings of its subsidiary, Show Me Technologies. The net margins of Show Me Technologies for 2016 were $3.8 million. During the 2016 departmental reorganization, the Financial Services Department was merged with the Administrative Services Department and became finance and administration. Our department provides warehousing, purchasing, vehicle and equipment maintenance, facilities maintenance, security, and of course, financial services. Show Me maintains over $11 million of inventory at various sites throughout the system. Three primary sites include the facility in Marshfield, one at Willow Springs, and one at Cuba. The main warehouse in Marshfield dispersed approximately $5 million of inventory during 2016. Each year we perform a complete physical count of all the inventory items. Following the 2016 physical count, only very minor adjustments were needed to adjust to the actual physical count. Considering the number of items that flow in and out of the inventory system on an annual basis, the outcome was impressive. One of the main roles of the purchasing department is to procure all the necessary materials needed for the daily operation of Show Me Power and Show Me Technologies. Competitive bids are obtained to continuously evaluate whether we are receiving equipment and materials at the best possible price. During 2016, we focused on facility maintenance and this included two significant projects. The headquarters building that Show Me Power occupies was built in 1958. The design was modern at the time with control of natural lighting accomplished using outside vertical louvers. During 2016, these louvers were removed and new energy efficient windows were installed. The lower outside wall was also replaced with insulated panels. The boardroom was expanded and updated to better serve our board members and member co-op general managers. In December 2011, the board approved a five-year plan to install security at all substations maintained by Show Me Power. The installation was proven to be effective in deterring copper theft, thus reducing losses and helping to ensure safety for personnel. 
The original plan was reviewed in 2016 and expanded for another five to seven years. During 2016, we completed installation at 16 communication huts, seven substations, and secured our backup network operations center in Seymour. We also focused on assisting our members with their security endeavors. I hope the 12 founding members would be proud of what Show Me Power has become 75 years after its formation. It is my goal that 75 years from now, future generations can look back to see how much Show Me Power has grown and continues to focus on its members. Well, as you have seen and heard, 2016 was a year of challenges, accomplishments, and financial success. A few short weeks ago, we learned that a $79 million verdict against us had been overturned. While we were not surprised by this favorable verdict, it was still great news to actually hear it. The verdict from the Eighth Circuit Appellate Court was bittersweet. As we now know, that we need to work hard to improve and perfect many of our transmission line easements to ensure that we're able to continue to serve our members with world-class telecommunications for years to come. Our team is up to the challenges before us and we remain laser focused on what we need to do using our expertise and innovation to seek ways to continue providing low-cost electric and telecommunications service to an area that we call home in a reliable fashion, all with minimal negative impact to the daily lives of our members. So where are we headed over the next 75 years? Is this the type of transportation that will make that truck you saw me driving earlier an even rarer collector's item? One that actually used gasoline? Will charging electric cars, helping members with solar and home battery installations become as common as helping them size breaker boxes, ground source heat pumps, and water heaters? I can't say for sure what the future holds over the next 75 years. But what I do know is the board of directors and employees of your cooperative are dedicated to continue providing you with some of the lowest priced, most reliable electric service in the world. The past 75 years, we have all been blessed with many good memories. But I hope you look forward, as much as my wife Susie and I do, to making many new great memories in the years to come. Please enjoy the rest of your day as we have an opportunity to spend time together over lunch, learn from some of the best and brightest from our power supplier, and then have some social time to complete our day. Thank you very much.